Today we're going to look at all the picks that happened in the first round of the 2024 draft. And there were some major winners and major losers. We'll discuss who they are. But before we get into this video, go check out W.GG. Use my code Shredder for, I know it says 10% right here, right here, sorry, but it's 20% off now. They've upgraded it to 20% off uh, on any of their products, their energy drinks, their bottles, whatever you want. Get it on their website for 20% off using code Shredder, S-H-R-D-3-R, or click the link in the description. Let's get right into this video. So here is our tier list, and we're going to start off just by going through the teams pick by pick, starting off with the Bears, right? Their first overall pick. We're using a tier list, and yeah, other picks will move around, but you'll get the point in a minute. Either way, the Bears, they had two picks. They started off with Caleb Williams, and they get Roma Dunze at nine. They're S tier. S tier draft, they're one of the winners because they took Caleb Williams. They didn't mess it up. They didn't botch it. And honestly, the Bears, who knows? They might botch it. You never really know with them. Roma Dunze... Do I think they should have gone Dallas Turner? I do. I don't think they should have taken Roma Dunze because they have two good receivers already. But at the same time, you're helping out your quarterback. Go do it. It doesn't really matter. It's picking two different routes. But, you know, either way, neither of them are bad. It's just I would have taken Dallas Turner. That defense does need some more help pretty substantially. And the offense is not necessarily as needy as all. You could even get later receivers in later rounds that are probably... I mean, they're not as good as Roma Dunze off the top, but... You can develop them, and again, especially with guys like Keenan Allen ahead of them, they're not going to be concerned. The Commanders take Jaden Daniels, and for them, I'm giving them just an A. They took the guy who everybody thought they would, but not who they probably should have. Drake Mays probably, well, not probably, he's a better prospect. Um, this guy, I'm not sure how he's going to turn out in the NFL, considering his lackadaisical decision-making and you know his willingness to throw himself into uh, hits that he should never take in college, and that's not going to get any better in the NFL um, he's a fine prospect. He is. But you're just not going to be a top-tier winner in this draft class taking Jaden Daniels over Drake May to me, which makes the Patriots an S-tier. They did what they needed to do. They took Drake May. Drake May would be the best quarterback in this class if Caleb Williams didn't exist. You know, it's just prospect fatigue with both of these guys. For a while there, we heard Caleb Williams might not be the number one pick anymore. Maybe Jaden Daniels will be. It's because he was the new guy, and these two guys we've heard about for a year and a half being as good as they are. Either way, Marvin Harrison Jr. at four. This was a pick that a lot of people didn't think was going to happen. A lot of us thought that they would trade down. That's a that's a S tier. That's a, you did what you know whatever. However, they have a pick later on at 27 with Darius Robinson. I like Darius Robinson. I think he's a first round player, but they're getting dropped down to an A, mainly because I feel like they could have gone with a lot better players. Here's the thing with the Cardinals, they don't have enough room to say that they specifically need anything. They have so many needs that they could literally go anywhere. I think, I like Darius Robinson. He's a, I think he was a first round player. However, with Cooper DeSheen, Jerzon Newton still on the board, you can't pass up them for a guy who, you know, is less of a prospect than them. Even with A.D. Mitchell, Kool-Aid McKinstry, I'd probably go those guys over Darius Robinson still. Um, you know, they're, it's a fine pick. It's not bad. However, I just think this one is not quite as good as some of the others. And that brings them down to an A. Big deal. They're an A. The Chargers taking Joe Alt. I'll give him a B. It's fine. He didn't play well when he was at the right tackle spot in the uh, you know the offseason stuff at the Senior Bowl and whatnot or whatever he was at. There's some concern there. However, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing. I, I trust Harbaugh with this. He's a great player. Don't get me wrong. It's just you have Rashawn Slater. You have no one in receiver. You have your pick of the other two receivers. I like the pick. It's fine. That's why it's going to B is like the, I like it. We just could have gone somewhere else and that would have been fine too. But hey, it's not a big deal. After that, the New York Giants, they are getting an S tier grade from me simply because they didn't go with a quarterback. Do I think that they have their quarterback of the future on their roster and Daniel Jones? Absolutely not. No way. He is terrible. But at the same time, you're paying him $40 million. Don't waste your pick at a guy like J.J. McCarthy, who I like J.J. McCarthy as a prospect, but this guy may not turn out to be all that great of a quarterback himself. J.J. McCarthy, that is. Go get a receiver who has all the upside in the world to be there for maybe to make Daniel Jones a little better or for the future when you have no receivers on your roster. This was the no-brainer pick. J.C. Latham at 7. Uh, I'm going to give it a C tier. Don't love it. Not the best tackle on the board, in my opinion. 
They needed more of a left tackle, and, and also, in my opinion, I don't think J.C. Latham even stays at tackle in the NFL. I don't think he's athletic enough. Um, he's a fine player. He's just not a top seven pick at all. Uh, and Michael Penix Jr. going at eight to the Falcons. This is an F pick. Now, there's multiple reasons. One, to me, Michael Penix is not the fourth, or the, excuse me, yeah, the fourth best quarterback available. He's not the fifth best quarterback available. There's a reason this guy was primarily mocked outside of the first round or maybe in the last few picks of it. I don't care what the Atlanta Falcons say. I don't care that they might be so much better, no more than me because they're the team. I don't care about any of that. This is a stupid pick. One, you just paid Kirk Cousins so much money. Oh, but you're thinking about your future. How? You just, you have so much money tied up in Kirk Cousins. Now you're paying this guy to not even be all that good. Oh, well, he ran a 4 4 40. Who cares? If you watch one game of his, any time in his career, he doesn't move. It, I don't care what he might run a 40 as fast as he might do that. But when he plays football, he doesn't move like that. It doesn't matter. Plus, all the talk about him being the best deep ball thrower is completely overblown. Um, he, he's, he's, he, th- he has a really strong arm, but that doesn't mean you throw the best deep ball. Just because you can throw it the farthest doesn't mean you throw the best deep ball. His accuracy downfield is not as good as people like to say. I just don't see how this guy is the fourth best quarterback, much less a first rounder before pick 25-ish. I just don't see that. You only get him in the first round to make sure you get that extra year on, the fifth year option at the back end of the first round, in my opinion. Listen, I know the hair's a little crazy. It's just I didn't want to fix it. I'm going to be honest. So here we are. Either way, pick number nine, we already went over Roma Dunze. The Minnesota Vikings trade up to 10 to grab J.J. McCarthy. You know, they stuck, in, they stuck, they picked where they were, and they got the quarterback they probably wanted anyways. They got J.J. McCarthy at 11 or 10. They moved up one spot, but that was just to make sure that, you know, Denver or something didn't go crazy. Um, I think that's fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. Uh, not to mention, they also traded up a few picks later on and got Dallas Turner. They might be the supreme winner of this draft. They really could be because they didn't trade up both of their first-round picks just to get J.J. McCarthy. I think that would have been a fine thing to do because quarterbacks are just more valuable. And this guy is the fourth best quarterback on the board. However, I mean, you stuck and picked where you were. You got what you wanted to. And that's fine. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm just not worried about that. You know, it, it is what it is. You got where you got. Sorry, somebody texted me and I was trying to read it. But either way, that's fine. J.J. McCarthy, Dallas Turner, a great turnout. Uh, You're not worried about that whatsoever. Then, we go on to, who was it next? The Jets trade back, and they get Olufashanu. I think this guy is highly underrated. Great pick for the Jets. I'm not going to give him an S. I might give him an S just because they traded back and still got him. Granted, it was one pick, and we all knew the Vikings were going up for a quarterback. But you you get an S because, you know what? Yeah, they're getting an S. You know why? Because they move up one spot, and or they move back one spot, and just grab an extra pick later on just to get the same guy they would have taken anyways. Great deal for them. Bo Nix at 12. Is Bo Nix worth a 12th overall pick? No, except for the fact that he's a quarterback and the next best quarterback on the board. If Penix and Nix were still here, this would still be Nick, or Penix. Ex- or Nix, excuse me, I can't think. Uh, he's a really good quarterback. I mean, he, he, he was a really good college quarterback, right? And the thing that he has over Penix, in my opinion, is the wherewithal up here. He has that better than anyone in this draft, uh, better than Caleb Williams, better than Jaden Daniels, better than Drake May. His pre-snap reads are pristine. Uh, he knows how to. He knows how a play is going to go before it happens. He's got that, you know, that Drew Brees esque run about him, and he's got to get paired with Sean Payton, which worked out with Drew Brees pretty well. I think that's a really solid pick. You get him. Is he worth a 12th overall pick if he's, you know, as good of a prospect as he is, but at a different position? No. However, he's a quarterback. Quarterbacks are valuable. The Broncos had to pick a quarterback. It doesn't matter who it was. If Spencer Rattler was the best one on the board, they'd pretty much have to take him. They just can't afford to not. They get an A from me. Brock Bowers at 13. Love Brock Bowers. This is getting a C for me. I just don't really care for this pick. It's really weird. They just drafted Michael Mayer last year. You probably could have gone a lot of other directions. A tackle? Um, I, I would even think an edge rusher would be more valuable here. It's just, he was not the best player available at all. Even a little bit. So, well, best player available to their needs. Because they could have gone a lot better places. I think he's a great player. He might be the best player available. I just said that entirely wrong. But to their needs, that was just 
wonky. Absolutely. Talise Fuaga, I think it's a B. Really solid. Nothing crazy about it. You know, it's a good pick. They may be an A. You know, I don't know. I just try not to give everybody an A. But we'll, we'll say A. I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop them down because of passing up on the Cooper DeGenes and the Jerzon Newtons of the world. When I think those guys were just a lot better players. I don't know how they're on the board still. But the Saints. I mean, they, they did a good job. You know, nothing wrong with them at all. Lay to at eleven or fifteen. I don't know why I said eleven. I'm gonna give it a B. Really solid pick. Um, you know, I think there's a ceiling there, but there's also a pretty high floor with guys like Dallas Turner still on the board. Way higher ceiling. Lower floor, though, you get more risk, but you get a lot more reward, potentially. Was this guy the best edge rusher? Maybe, maybe not. Not to me, personally. But it's a fine pick. They need an edge rusher, they get an edge rusher. Byron Murphy going to Seattle. I'm going to give this one a D. Love the player. Love Byron Murphy. They just paid Leonard Williams. They have Jermont Jones. What are they doing? This guy can do more than just be your average defensive tackle. However, you needed an edge rusher. And Dallas Turner's on the board. I don't understand this one bit. I mean, Mike McDonald, maybe he just wants to do his own thing and his defense thing, whatever. But at the same time, not a smart pick. Just because, you know, it makes sense to one coach doesn't make it a smart pick, in my opinion. I don't think that he was the best player on the board. I think Drazon Newton's a better D-tackle, personally. I just don't get this one at all. Love the player, Byron Murphy. Hey, I don't like the pick. I don't like the team fit with what they have going on on the team already. At 17, the Vikings got Dallas Turner. Great pick. We've already talked about it. 18, Bengals grab a Marius Mims. I'll give it a B. I'm fine with it. Nothing wrong with it at all. I mean, it's not a flashy pick. They probably needed a D-tackle more, in my opinion. But at the same time, they got a really good tackle prospect. The only thing is, he's a little raw. But, I mean, Fatanu on the board. That's the only part I don't really love. Okay, cool. Either way, they got a good player. Jared Verse at 19 to the Rams. That's an A pick. Jared Verse should not have been there, I don't think. I don't think any of these guys should have lasted as long as they did uh, Dallas Turner, Jared Verse-wise. I think Dallas Turner should have been a top 10 pick. I think Jared Verse should be a top 15 pick. Uh, good pick. You got him there. You need an edge rusher really, really badly. You get one, you got it. You go. Troy Fatano to the Steelers. I'm going to give it an A. It's not the best pick in the world. He does have some injury concerns, but I didn't think he'd be there for the Steelers. I I'm not an absolute lover of this pick, but it's a really solid pick. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing bad about it. How you doing? Keep it moving. Um, Chop Robinson, that that is hilarious. Um, F, I, I don't like it at all. I think this was a stupid pick, mainly because of the fact that they have Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb. Are they the best head rushers in the league? No. They got hurt last year. That's a big part of why they got this. Why? He's not going to play over either of them. Either way. No. Why are you doing this? I don't understand this at all. Go get a D-tackle since you lost Christian Wilkins. Go get a offensive lineman, Graham Barton, on the board. Go get, I don't care, a receiver. Why would you take the position that you already have two starters at? Doesn't make any sense to me. I don't care what you say about it. Quinton Mitchell to the Eagles. All right, S tier. Get over it. Um, I don't know how this guy lasted. I don't think, to me, Cooper DeGene is my favorite corner in this draft. I think he is the best overall player at that cornerback position. However... In terms of a fit to a team, Quinion Mitchell is a better fit to Philly. The only, I would give them an A if they were any other team because Cooper DeGene, to me, is a better corner. And he, I, I don't know how he's still on the board. That's a whole different conversation um, either way. But because of it being the Eagles, I don't think DeGene would fit as well as Quinion Mitchell would. That way, I'm leaving them there. Lots of winners in this draft class. I think that people did really good this year overall. The Jaguars getting Brian Thomas Jr., I'm giving it an A. Um really, really solid, you know, help Trevor Lawrence out. That's the thing. We've tried to say that Trevor Lawrence is bad and whatever, but he has not, not ha he has not had any help. You know, this, this team put Christian Kirk and Calvin Ridley around him and everybody thought they were so good for what reason? I don't know. They both stink. They're both bottom tier wide receiver twos. They're not good. Calvin Ridley is so supremely overrated. Now they get a guy who, can he be a wide receiver one in the NFL, like a legit elite wide receiver one? I'm not really certain of that. However, I already think he is better than Christian Kirk, than Gabe Davis, as he walks into this building. Had Calvin, Calvin Ridley still been here, this guy's better than him as he walks into the building. No doubt about it in my mind. Terry and Arnold to the Lions. Um, I'm going to give it... 
They're, they're kind of on that Eagles pick, too. I don't love Terry and Arnold. I think he's worse than uh, Mitchell and Dejean. But the only reason I'm going to give them some credit, like I said about the Eagles, if this was any other team, I would give them a little crap for not be taking Dejean. The only reason I'm not is because they have Brian Branch. And Brian Branch is going to play that slot role, that you know move around, dime back, nickel stuff. Cooper Dejean would do similar things probably for the Lions, at least. He can play outside, Dejean can. But for the Lions, he'd probably be the same guy. And I understand why you wouldn't take him. However, I still think I personally have Nate Wiggins. Mm, no, I'll put him in an A. I think he's better than Nate Wiggins. I'll leave him there. It's a low A. He's not. The, every team I put in will be above them, but he's still an A. It's a good pick. Nothing wrong with it. Jordan Morgan, I'm going to give it a B. I'm fine with it. Um, you know, they probably should have gone Tyler Guyton. I think that would have been better. Could have even gone Graham Barton, and that would have been better in my opinion. But you get a really solid tackle. This guy is a left tackle. That's the reason they go for him, and I think that's that's why you get him overall. The Bucks going with Graham Barton, um, you know, that's pretty solid, I guess. they. I'm assuming they're going to put him at center since Ryan Jensen retired. Um, we'll put him at B. I think it's fine. I don't love the fact that a center goes in the first round. However, this guy does have versatility to play out in guard or tackle anytime you need him. So that does make some more sense at all. Then now we hit 27 with Darius Robinson on the Cardinals, where it brings him down to there. Uh, and after that, Xavier Worthy. The Chiefs trade up for Xavier Worthy. I'm going to give it a C. I don't think Xavier Worthy was the best receiver on the board. I don't think he was really worth a first-round pick. If he did go in the first round, it was only at 32 to the Chiefs. And they traded up to get a guy who I'm pretty sure would have been there either way. I don't, I really don't think he would have been there. Or he would have been taken between 28 and 32. I really don't think so. Uh, he's a fine player. But trading up to get him is a little bit meh. Just not great. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Then for Tyler Guyton on the Cowboys. Really solid pick. Gives him really good flexibility to do whatever they want to on the O-line. With Terrence Steele. With Tyler Smith. Um, I'm gonna give it a. I'm gonna give it an A. I think it's a really good pick. I don't think I think with what would the board played out like, this is makes the most sense. It really does. And I think I had them mocked to getting Tyler Guyton at 24 or wherever they were before they traded down. Baltimore getting Nate Wiggins. It's a B. He's not a Baltimore style corner. They want their physical guys. They are you know a lot bigger. Um, not really what Nate Wiggins is whatsoever. However, best player available at the position of need. Um, real, no, he's not, actually. He's not. Cooper DeGene would have been a whole lot better for what they want to do. He's going to be D. I just remembered that um, Cooper DeGene's on the board. So, no, that was a terrible pick because for what they do, Cooper DeGene would have been so much better. I'm glad they didn't get Cooper DeGene, though. Thank you, Baltimore. Then the next pick, Ricky Pearsall to the Niners. Kind of an odd one. If this was any other team, like legitimately any other team, they would get probably a D or an F. But being the Niners, I'm going to give them a B. No, I can't go that high. I'll give him a C. Be fair with him. But this guy, if you're going to have to get rid of Brandon Ayuk, which does look supremely likely right now, this makes the most sense. Ricky Pearsall is basically Brandon Ayuk light. He does, If what do you think Brandon Ayuk's good at? Running routes, run blocking, being physical. What is Ricky Pearsall good at? Running routes, run blocking, being physical. It's exactly what you need. And if you're going to have to get rid of Brandon Ayuk and you can get some assets back for that, now you get a guy who can directly replace him. Is he going to be as good as Ayuk? Maybe not. But you get a guy who will do the same role and do it well. He's going to play his NFL role very well, I believe. Finally, the Bills trade down from 28 to 32 for the Chiefs and then trade back one more spot to the second round for the Cam the Carolina Panthers to come up and grab Xavier Leggett. I'm giving this a D tier, mainly because... Xavier Worthy, or not, excuse me, not Xavier Worthy. Uh, Adonai Mitchell is on the board, and I just don't think that makes any sense at all. Adonai Mitchell is so much of a better receiver than Xavier Leggett is. I just don't understand this at all. I mean, you keep him in the Carolinas. whoop de doo Let's go, man. Wonderful. Who cares, dude? No, go get the better receiver in Adonai Mitchell. Um, and you botched it. You also traded assets to get up to this to be able to take him. I just don't understand. I think the Bills, I'm going to give them a grade even though they didn't have a pick in the first round simply because of what they did do. The trading down from 28 to 32 to 33. They're going in S tier because they want A.D. Mitchell. I almost will guarantee you that. And they're going to trade down twice and still land A.D. Mitchell. 
in the first pick of the second round. Genius move by Buffalo. Congratulations, Buffalo. A.D. Mitchell, Josh Allen is going to be a great connection. Um, if they don't take him, I will be shocked. Unless they go Ladd McConkey, I think Mitchell would be better for the situation, but I would understand McConkey as well. He just kind of fits a Kansas City or Buffalo style of offense that I, I feel like they both have. Either way, we're not going to rank these two as they did not have first round picks at all. What do you think about this tier list? What do you think about these picks in the first round? Let me know. Um, these are my first round grades. Thank you guys for watching. And we will do way more draft content as we get through the rest of the next few rounds. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.